I'm not a coke head, but I know how to smell like one. This over-the-top, pink, flirtatious, playful aesthetic has taken over TikTok, and I'm intrigued. And because of that, I've put together five fragrances that are inspired by the coquette aesthetic that aren't Dior or Chanel, because we can step outside of the box and still be in keeping with this trend. So if this is something you're interested in, stick around. I have some thoughts. <laughs> Hi, I'm Janique, perfume collector and enthusiast, but more importantly, someone who's interested in all things aesthetics. Today we're focused on the coquette aesthetic, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is, where it came from, but more importantly, what fragrances really embody this particular trend. Looks like I lost my favorite touch. The Coke head aesthetic has been everywhere and it's marked by its flirtatiousness, its playfulness, pastel pings and soft florals. We see them on our timeline, we cannot get away from them. We're not trying to, are we? So this is an aesthetic trend that has been influenced heavily by the women of the 1920s and 30s, think flapper dresses, but also the women of the 40s and 50s with their bouffant skirts and the pastel colors. We see that represented here. So this has been re-emerging since the 2020, 2021 arc where we're all stuck in our houses. Let's not talk about that time, we are scarred. And the coquette aesthetic really re represented it itself now here's the thing the coquettes have been around since like the 17th century they've been been around but i am going to argue mm, and i could be wrong but the reemergence really takes inspiration from things like bridgerton just taking off and seeing that soft femininity on screen and wanting to represent that yourself i get it start back in the day so we starting in the 17th century yes we're starting with history when the word coquette was created by the french to describe men who were in these streets doing way too much i know then the patriarchy took the word that was describing these men who were extra as fuck, I mean, yes, to describe women who were too flirtatious, not too flirtatious, very flirtatious and good at the flirtation. So here's how it goes. We're in the 18th century. Women are being courted. Women who are good at flirting to get men to want them, love them, admire them are considered to be coquettes. And it's a positive connotation. But by a hundred years later, it's lost all positive connotations. It's all negative. It's all negative. See, if you're good at something, these men want to take it away from you they do next thing you know we have the word coquette really being used to describe women who are using flirtatiousness to manipulate men so it's not that they want these men they're not looking to connect and have partnership with anybody you're just looking to con people mm. so the coquette was mostly putting on a show to get men to want her to extract from him him things she wanted and that was considered yeah a negative thing and so the term itself fell out of favor because it lost all of its positive connotations by the time it was being being used like this. The coquette of 2023 looks a lot different than the coquettes of yesteryear. And by yesteryear, I mean Tumblr era and anything pre-2020 because did life exist? Well, for 2020, no, it did not. Mm. So anyway, the 2023 coquette isn't so much about manipulation and putting on a show for men because low key, I'm not even sure how much men dig this particular aesthetic. I think the way that we see women's bodies on the internet has shifted so much that someone in a knee length pink skirt like isn't giving mm, explicitly overtly sexual and i think that is more in keeping with some of what these dudes want to see i think a lot of the times the coquette aesthetic are for women themselves who want to represent how they feel on the inside like you feel like you're a pastel baddie then wear that pastel bit like nobody is stopping you except there are people on the internet who want to problematize everything and like to you shame on you not everything needs to be pathologized. And I think women wanting to wear these pale pinks, hug their teddy bears, and go to bed in rooms filled with florals. You know what? Do you? Do you? Life is hard. Life is hard. Do what you got to do to survive. But one of the things that keeps coming up is how do you add perfume to this? Like, how do you smell like the coquette? How do you complete the look from the outfit itself to the accessories to the fragrances? And I got five fragrances here that are total coquette if i do say so myself 
The first fragrance that I would recommend if you're a coquette in the making is this little guy here. It is La Vie Spell from Lancome. It is a lovely, sweet fragrance. The main floral note in this is iris, which gives a mild powderiness. It just reads very airy, very ladylike, and very sweet. The fruit, the main fruit note in here is black currant, which is very sweet, very intense. And in the base, we get some praline, we get some tonka bean, we get some vanilla. So if you love this really soft, round, sweet fragrance that really smells ultra feminine, ultra ladylike, and smells like those pink pastels that you often wear in this aesthetic, then this is a fantastic one. I absolutely love this. It is peak femininity to me. I enjoy the softness of it. It is just immaculate. Now this is the most popular Lancome fragrance for a reason. So if you're looking to smell a little bit different from everybody else, this is probably not the way to go because you'll probably find a lot of people who agree with you that this smells fantastic because it absolutely does. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. But if you do want to smell a little bit different and you don't want to smell like everybody else and you want to stay away from Lancome, then I'd recommend Fragonard's Grand de Soleil. I mean, this is a lovely powdery fragrance. Now, this is heavy on the powder, whereas La Vies Belle is like light powder you can barely sense it it's there but it's barely there it's more airy than anything else this one is definitely powdery that's what you're getting but what you're also getting are these gourmand spices like cinnamon and nutmeg mixed with a bit of vanilla and it makes it sweet and soft and powdery and ultra ultra feminine now it's hard to find fragonard fragrances outside of europe that's usually where you'd find them. But if you come across this one and it's on your discount website, I'd say check it out if you love a powdery, like heliotrope level fragrance with a lot of sweetness, a lot of restraint, very demure, very soft, very lady. Like this, this is the kind of girl who like doesn't even like raise her voice too much, right? Like this is just very demure and very restrained. It is a lovely one. And those spices just make it so much more interesting and so much more lovely and kind of complicated things now i've said in previous videos before mm, i don't see for spices like that this is a blend of spices that i can get behind because everything is just pulled all the way back it lets that powdery nice shine and that vanilla shine in the most lovely way so getting away from powdery altogether, I think we gotta go Prada Candy. Now this is a classic fragrance. It's not for everybody. Most people find this kind of one note, but maybe that's what you're looking for. You're looking for clean sweetness. Now this is a caramel fragrance with a little bit of musk. That's basically all you're getting in this. And it is a fantastic fragrance in my opinion. No, I know a lot of people have tried Prada Candy and kind of find it pretty basic. But if you're not looking for your fragrance to overshadow out of your outfit you're not looking for it to scream you're looking for it to just complement your already wonderful smell then product candy is a great one because it just adds a little bit of sweetness on top of your own body smell in a way that kind of sinks in and settles in so if you love caramel smells and that like a little bit of burnt sugar smell then product candy is a fantastic fantastic way to go if you're looking to lean into some of the sexier more flirtatious aspects of the coke head aesthetic then there's nowhere to go but here it is Angel Nova by Mugler. Now this is primarily a fruit fragrance with raspberry and lychee. That raspberry is really sweet, really supple. I mean, the bottle says everything, right? That pink juice, that pink bottle all together really scream oh playful and decadent and wonderful now the mid is rose right and that rose offers a bit of balance to the sweet raspberry and lychee to create a nice balance it's like bordering on tropical but isn't quite tropical because that rose pulls everything back it is a wonderful fragrance if you love something a bit sweeter a bit brighter a lot more flirtatious a lot sexier then this is the way to go check it out it's angel no this is the edp version now if you want a fresher version with some citrus in there and a more pronounced rose smell the edt version of this is the way to go there so if you want sweeter more intense fruit 
the EDP version if you want more rose and fresher like citrusy smells then you want to go for the EDT version either way they're both bomb and they're both fantastic and they both really perform really well and I think really embody the sexier dimensions and aspects of the coquette aesthetic so definitely check this out if you get a chance the next one I think is the granddaddy of all of these. I think it most represents the coquette aesthetic for a number of reasons and it's this guy. Look at her. It's Vera Wang Princess. Now, number one, the bottle. And number two, the name. And number three, the bottle. It all goes. It all fits. But what does this smell like? Now, it's an apricot. Oh, let's think about how apricot smells. That juiciness with a bit of green apple for bite and freshness. It's a lot fresher than a lot of the fragrances we have here today. In the I mean, we have tuberose which is really sweet and creamy and in the base we got some vanilla and we got some woods but mostly what we're getting here is sweetness and crispness from the fruit with the creamy softness from the tuberose this is a soft beautiful fragrance that sits on the skin really well and is really lovely and complimentary so if you don't want anything as sweet as angel nova or you don't want anything as widespread and like so many people have as la vie belle and you don't like powdery so you would never go for fragonard then this is the way to go you get creaminess you get sweetness you get some vanilla it's really comforting but really really flirty at the same time this is a fine fantastic option just look for it for when it's on sale y'all don't buy it full price don't do it the coquette aesthetic is all about femininity softness playfulness and leaning into your best pale pink self and i am all here for it it is not my particular brand of femininity but i love to see women express themselves in all these different ways that feel true to them now i know it gets problematized because people love to pathologize all the things but i do enjoy seeing all these women dressing up in their soft florals and their knee-high socks and their Mary Jane shoes because I think it's fun. I once saw this quote from Foucault that essentially said that life is an aesthetic project and it completely rocked my world and changed my life. To think about life not just as utility and function but as beauty and art and to think of yourself as the piece of art that you are molding seemed like a really novel concept and i think people who lean into aesthetic trends already knew this and i was just new to the idea and it took me finding some old french philosopher you know to get it but i got it and every time i see this particular trend on my for you page i think you go bitch you go the coquette aesthetic isn't all rainbows and unicorns one of the things you notice as you scroll through your tiktok is that it's all thin white women and that it doesn't seem like a welcoming space to women of other races and other body types and that is never a great thing to see on top of that you often have this cross pollination with pro anna narratives and no right now i get it whenever you have a niche that particularly invites women younger women to participate you often have a push to idealize thinness to the point of being ill and i get it i think if we want to critique anything we critique the systems that make all of this possible and encourage women to do this in the first place rather than the women themselves getting in their comment section and calling them out their names for no fucking reason i think for the most part people are just trying to find themselves try to find what makes them happy we got to give them the space and the grace to do exactly that without pathologizing every decision they happen to make thanks so much for being here if you liked the video don't forget to like below comment subscribe do all the things show me a little bit of love i would really appreciate it and if you enjoyed this video check out my video on soft floral perfumes that are complimentary for everybody and keep coming back because i'm gonna keep making these videos if you keep showing up bye y'all